Well, good morning. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. I will and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It's Pastor Jonathan McKnight, Sanctuary of Praise Ministries right here in Orlando, Florida. We're excited about this opportunity to share with you when our 10 a.m. When Eagles Gather morning worship with you, Facebook Live. Contact your friends, your neighbors. Let them know that we are live and we're Dr. Creating, declaring the word of God this morning. We're excited about this chance. We're excited about this opportunity, knowing this, that God is in total control of every situation. We know and we all know our country is in dire needs of God's protection, God's healing and God's guidance. And that's why we're coming to you today as a unit, as the body of Christ, as friends, believers and even unbelievers. We're knowing that we all need God's help. Today, we're going to be teaching the word of God. We're going to go into worship. We're going to have an opportunity for you to experience what we call your house praise. And we're believing that God is going to do great things. What we're going to do right now is usher in the Holy Spirit within each one of our homes, believing that God is going to do great things. Right now, we're going to go into worship with Pastor Beverly Crawford saying, Holy Spirit, come and fill this place. And after that, we're going to be able to send the word of God by way of prayer all over the nation, all over the world, praying for you, our families, our nation, our military, our government, and all those that are dealing with this great challenge, this epidemic with this coronavirus, as well as COVID-19, believing that God is going to help each one of us and station his angels around us. So right now, let's go. And let the Holy Spirit come and fill this place in each one of our homes with Pastor Beverly Crawford. How many of you want the Holy Spirit to fill this place? Come on, let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Spirit, come feel this place. 
Well, that's what we need God to do. We need the Holy Spirit to come and fill this place, fill our homes, fill our businesses, fill the streets, fill our stores, fill our hearts. We need the Holy Spirit to come and fill our surroundings so that the presence of God will be able to rest among our nation, among our bodies. And we're getting ready to go to the throne of grace. We're getting ready to pray for so many people. We believe that prayer is a must. We believe and know that we need the help of God. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and we are safe. And one of the things we want to do is go to the throne of grace and pray for you and pray for your families and let you know that our hearts and our prayers are with you, with our nation. And we get ready to go and pray to God, believing God for miracles in this season. Father, we thank you for your love and we thank you for your mercy. You're the amazing God and you do amazing things. One of the things, God, we come to you knowing is that you have all power in your hands. There are many people right now broken, grieving, full of anxiety, full of fear, the fear of the unknown and not knowing what's going to be next. But God, right now, I'm asking your mercy, your grace, your power, your love and your healing angels, your protecting angels to be able to guide us and lead us. As, oh God, this great challenge, this great task of knowing that we're dealing with this COVID-19 virus and the coronavirus that has impacted the entire world. But God, you said in your word that the earth of the Lord's is yours. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And we bind every satanic attack. We bind every demonic interruption, every satanic interference. And we're praying for peace and we're praying for victory. We're praying for a solution. We know that because of Jesus' blood, we have all power. And God, we're asking you to help us cover our government, cover government and leaders all over the nation. God, even those who are looking for solutions and answers, we know that you have the answer. But God, I'm asking you to give it to us as well. The answer is in your word. The answer is in your name. The answer is in your blood. And God, I pray for our military troops and our first responders those who are making major decisions to impact people's lives cover our children our seniors those who are homeless those who are without those who are broken those who are in discomfort those who are fighting for their lives we're praying for peace we're praying for healing according to psalm 91 that you give your angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways no evil shall befall us no plague shall come nigh our dwelling so right now god today we're trusting you that every house is covered, covered with victory, covered with peace, covered with provision, covered with your presence. And we thank you and we ask this in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I'm telling you something. I'm believing that God has heard us and that God's going to do great things. I'm getting ready to go to the word of God in just a moment. But there's something important that we like to do is sanctuary of praise ministries and all over the world. We know you love it. And that's something about praise. And there's a segment every week by which we're going to have what we call house praise. And we house praise means that if you can't shout and dance and praise him in the walls, we only give you an opportunity just to hear a sound so you can get up in your pajamas. You can get up in your whatever you have on now and you can dance and give God praise or you can look at your persons that are in the house and say our house have already had worship. Our houses have already had prayer and now we're getting ready to have some praise. We're getting ready to praise God today with none other than evangelist Renee Winston that says only, 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 only God can do it. Get ready wherever you are. Let's go into what we call a house praise. Only God can do it.
tell you what, I don't know about you, but I've had my praise moment. I've had worship. I've had prayer. I've had praise. And truly, we need to know that only God can do it. Only God can deal with what we're dealing with. Only God knows where the solution is. Only God can speak a word. And we know that all is well. The Bible says he sent his word and he healed and he delivered and he set those that needed to be set free. So I want you to know right now, I'm getting ready to go into the word of God just for a few moments to let you know what God has laid on my heart to share with you. I want to say to you before we go forth in the word, our help, our confidence, our trust is in God. Look at how the world has changed. Look at how things have just all of a sudden in the last two weeks, the normality of most humans have now changed. But guess one thing that has not changed? God has not changed. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. And he's definitely going to be the same on tomorrow. I want to share something with you from the book of Mark, the 10th chapter. And I want to begin to read at verse 46. The word of the Lord. And they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Tamias, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried out the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man saying unto him, be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. And he casting away his garment rose and came to Jesus and Jesus answered and said unto him what will thou that I should do unto thee the blind man said unto him Lord that I might receive my sight and Jesus said unto him go thy way thy faith have made thee whole and immediately he received his sight and follow Jesus in the way. I want to take a few moments to share with you right now from this thought. Affected, but not infected. Affected, but not infected. Again, affected, but not infected. Father, bless his word. Bless our hearts. Bless our ears that we might hear what you're saying unto us. I can't think of a person in the world right now that over the last 30 days, particularly the last two weeks and perhaps even the last two days that has not been affected. At some place in our lives right here in the city of Orlando, um, I've been here for 20 plus years. And I've seen things that has affected our city, our community. Disney is closed. Universal is closed. SeaWorld is closed. Hospitals, one of them has closed. Stores are closing. Businesses are closing. My favorite Starbucks is closed. And schools are closed. We have been affected. Shelves in grocery stores are empty. Can't find hand sanitizer, toilet paper, Lysol. We have been affected. People have lost their jobs. People are concerned. We have been affected. The approach of even what has happened with this COVID-19 and this virus has caused there to be such an effect until it's literally changed the way we live. The consciousness even in our brains, in our thoughts, things that we used to just do like 
press a button on the elevator or just open the door or just put your hand on the, the gas uh, tank. We have been affected. Just used to be a time, even in church, we used to say high five your neighbor or shake your neighbor hand. But because something has affected us, the consciousness of our mind has begun to change because we have been affected. We have been affected economically. I'm on Facebook Live, never saw this day coming. I never saw and thought that this is probably one of the first Sundays since I've been living that I've been affected this way to basically be told in obedience to our government and obedience to our city and our county officials and just the care of our, our membership and the people that embrace in our church, wanting them to be safe and wanting them to be protected, we decide and God decides to take us down another whole route because we've been affected. And I really believe that what God is doing, he's doing several things. He's causing you to have to understand something that's very important, that the church is not necessarily in a building, but the church is in your heart. And the effects of what this season that we're in and what God has allowed has caused us to come to grips with what's either affected you or infected you. And one of the things that I want you to understand as I get ready to get to this text just for a few moments is we've all been affected. I've been thinking about this and I'm just thanking God, you know, that, you know, there are loved ones that we have. Everything has been affected. Um, I had to go through the bank and only go through the drive through and and restaurants are closed you can't go in some restaurants and many of them you if you could go in them maybe a week ago but then they changed it to where you go through the drive through because there have been effects our children are at home like, see sometimes god will allow something to happen to affect you to see if it will infect you many times there were parents who never got to know their children because school, the parents were working and the kids were in school. Then by the time they come back together, there has been a situation by which there was no time. But the real question now is now that something has happened, are you going to allow this thing that has happened in your life and in my life? Are we going to allow it to just be something that affects us or something that infects us the mindset of many right now is fear the mindset of many right now is torment the mindset of many right now is I don't know what to do I don't know where to go I don't know how to function because I've been affected and most times when people have been affected by something they become infected with something else but right now we're going to talk about a blind man right now we're getting ready to talk about somebody that was affected but we're going to later on find out in this text that being affected doesn't mean you have to become infected. And as, as I'm sharing this word of God with you, the world has changed. Worship has changed. Actually, God is setting up the innovativeness and the creativity of you and who you are. He wants to find out if your dream has been affected, will you become infected now with doubt and unbelief? Because see, the reason why God picked blind Bartimaeus for me today is because he was a blind man. And many of us have been blindsided, blindsided with this virus, blindsided with the job saying right now, we don't know if we're going to pay you blindsided, blindsided with the consciousness of a virus that we don't even understand the elements of it, trying to figure it out, blindsided by the fact that if a family member were to die, we might not can even have. I had a situation happen to where someone called me and said, uh, a great man of God passed, but right now the family had to go straight to the cemetery because they couldn't gather with more than 10 people affected. But are we gonna allow what affects us to actually infect our belief system and infect our faith because right now you got time to decide while you're in your home while you're listening to me right now you have time to decide what you're going to allow in your system 
What are you going to allow to either affect you or infect you? And one of the things that God is saying to me about this story is, is that when we pick blind Bernard Timaeus, Jesus had came in to Jericho and he was getting ready to leave out of Jericho. And the blind man heard that someone was passing by and he knew it was something different because there was a different sound. He knew it was more people following him because he sat by the highway side at the entry part of Jericho. He was sitting there begging and blind. What do you do when you feel like in your life, just about everything in your life that has come to pass, you've had to beg for it. You had to sit and wait. The blind side of life, the darkness of life, Actually, when you don't even know what God is doing, when you don't even know what's passing you by, you don't know whether it's something good, you don't know whether it's something bad, but you know something is passing. When you actually are going through life and you're trying to recognize that moment, that moment in your life that God has orchestrated, even though you've been blindsided, he wants to see if you will be affected to trust him or infected to not believe him. I believe that what we're going through in our nation and in our world, yes, is hardship. And God knows it's trying, it's testing. And there's a sense of concern and fear because even in our city, more cases, even around them, I'm definitely praying for the country of Italy. I mean, so many people in one day, over 600 people lost their lives. That's, that's an effect. And sometimes it looks like something's trying to infect you to where you saying, God, are you upset with me? God, are you mad with me? God, why is this happening? And so many times when you've been blindsided, you have those questions in your mind. Am I being punished? Is it a penalty? Is it something that had come from my past? Is it something that is allowing this to happen? Because Job said the thing I feared the most has come upon me. And sometimes when you're going through, there's some of you living in your home right now and you're wondering, Am I going to have enough food or what am I going to do about my kids? What am I, how am I going to free my grandchildren? What am I going to do? I'm affected. But the question now becomes is not whether you are affected. The question now becomes is whether you will allow the effect to cause there to be an infection. And when I think about this blind man, this blind man, could have felt sorry for himself he could have sat there every day even though he was forced to beg he had to deal with the hand that he was dealt blindsided can't even see which way to go had to be assisted had to be at the mercy of others had to simply ask for help every day some of us are not blind but it seems like every day we have to ask for help and here it is Jesus had came in and now Jesus was on his way out of the city. And so many times in our lives, if we're honest with ourselves, we miss God. We don't know when he comes and we don't know when he's passing us by. My prayer for each one of us is that God will give us the discernment to understand that I can't allow what has affected me to be, take me into depression, take me into oppression, take me into fear, stress, and anxiety, or I could potentially move myself out of position with God to get what God has for me. I didn't see myself on Facebook Live preaching and teaching the word of God on this day. It affected me because I can't go to my normal place by which I worship and give God glory. But I came to the conclusion that even though I've been affected, I will not become infected because the church is in me. The spirit of God is in me. The word of God is in me. It's in my heart. And even if I didn't give God enough time in my home, you and I today has this, I have this opportunity to be able to take the effects of this and turn the situation to actually work for your good. Because now there's time for prayer in our homes. Now there's time for worship. Now there's time to get to know our family. Now there's time to get to know our children. Now there's time to dig into the word of God. Now there is time to see 
if we are mature enough to go through a season, to go through an epidemic, to go through a trial, to go through a test and not become infected. Not only spiritually, but I begin to think about this, about one of the recommendations of the virus is to quarantine yourself. In other words, the power of separation and understanding that God is now giving us time, time to spend with him, time to create the element of worship, prayer, laughter, belief, and be able to quarantine yourself away from negative opinions, negative spirits, negative vibes. And sometimes God allows something to happen so you can isolate yourself and even when there's a crowd, because you're going to see in this text that when the blind man heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth coming, the Bible says he began to cry out. He began to make his presence felt by seeking God. And we're in that point now to where we got to cry out in our homes. We got to cry out from our hearts. We got to cry out from the window, from the doorpost. And we got to believe that God is going to give us what we need because it's time to give God a sound affected, but not infected. And what happened was, as the blind man began to cry out and Jesus was passing by, little did he know that this was going to be the last time that Jesus was going to come back through Jericho. He was on his way to offering up his body as a living sacrifice. So you and I might have the ability to come to Christ. So Jesus is on his way out. The blind man began to cry out, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. But there was people who said, you know what? Your praise, your cry out, you need to hush. You need to be silent. And sometimes if you're not careful, crying out to God, people might not understand where your pain is. They might not understand where your position is. They don't understand what you've been through. And then they try to bring on their thoughts about the fact that no, now is not the time. If there ever has been a time in our lives that we need to cry out to God, that time is now. Is there ever been a time where you need to pray with your family, where you need to worship in your home, to where you need to make it up in your mind that this is not about anything else but God, that time is now, he began to cry out, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And then the disciples, the very people following him, tried to get him to not go to God. But he cried out so much until Jesus stopped. What that tells me is, is there's a level of cry. There's a level of intensity. Because see, if he would have chose to listen to them, he might have got infected by their ability and their desire for him not to get closer to Jesus. There's so many of us right now, people don't have no clue as to where we are. There are many of you listening to me right now. You're at that breaking point. You're at your wit's end. You don't know. You're wondering if in April I'm going to have food. You're wondering if I even have a job anymore, you're wondering what's going to happen to my savings account. Some of you saying, I'm not wondering what's going to happen to my savings account. I don't have one. Some of you wondering, when is the government really going to send checks? And we're just in that effective mode. And man is trying to do what they can do. But right now, just like the song said earlier, only God can do this. He began to cry out to Jesus blind not knowing what he was going to do next blind not knowing which way he was going to go but here's the key to this for me is that god i don't see you but i believe you there and that's where many of us are right now and i encourage you right now as decreeing the word of god that you might not see what god is doing you might not know what god is doing you might not even know exactly where god is but you got to make sure that you understand that he's everywhere. And because he is everywhere, he will do what he needs to do and open doors in your life and make it so transparent that he's about to let you have a moment to where you're going to get closer to him. One of the things that I'm excited about is this right here.
is that when he cried out, Jesus stopped and told him to come. All of a sudden, the disciple says, go ahead. He hears you, but they never assisted him. They never helped him to get to Jesus. He threw off his outer garment, which was his blind clothes, and began to walk by faith and not by sight. There's some of you, you don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. You don't know what next week is going to hold. But I trust you to trust the voice of God and believe that if he is somewhere in your room, if he's somewhere in your house, if he's somewhere in your mind, if he's somewhere in your spirit, make it your business to walk by faith and not by sight. So I told you how we are affected but here is what you cannot become infected with you cannot become infected with doubt unbelief stress negative people negative spirits negative mindset you can't become consumed with just the amount of cases yes we can be concerned but we cannot be consumed we can pray for those who are affected we can pray for those who have been infected by this virus. But one thing that I will not become infected with, and that's with not trusting God. I got to believe that still God has me in a season and you in a season by which he will not pass us by until we see what he is doing next. He asked a question, what do you want me to do? The man could have said, give me some more money. Give me a check. Give me some silver. He said, I want to receive my sight. I want to be able to see you for who you are. I want to see my dreams again. I want to see my vision again. I want to see my self again. I want to see what I promised was promised by you again. I don't want to see my failures right now. I don't want to see my disappointments. I don't want to see my brokenness. I don't want to see my hurt. I don't want to see the devastation. The enemy constantly reminds me of the mistakes I've made, of the fears I have. I don't want to see that. What I need to see is I need to see God and I need to see me. I need to see myself again, walking, laughing, smiling, complete, whole, with victory, with favor with increase being used by God I need to see the favor the promises of God I need to see life without seeing mountains I need to see life and understand that tests are an opportunity for my greatness to come forward I need to fully understand and I want you to fully understand the enemy does not attack what God doesn't care about which he cares about all of us and what I mean by that is if you were not important to God you wouldn't be going through some of the things that you're going through now but because you're chosen to do great things he wants to blindside you he wants to stop you from believing he wants to stop you from trusting he wants to stop you from worshiping he wants to stop you from praising there are some people right now up under the sound of my voice you've been overtaken by oppression you've been overtaken by depression You've been overtaken by shackles. The enemy's trying to get you to go back to your old ways. He's trying to get you to go back to some of them old habits and some of the old addictions and some of the old things. But I refute it. I rebuke it. I speak against it because your purpose is more important. There's more ahead of you than there is behind you. You need to do like the blind man. You need to cry out and say, have mercy on me, God. God, I need you. God, I, I need you to touch me. I can't get infected. I can't get infected with the spirit of suicide. I can't get infected with the spirit of drugs and opioids. And, and I, I cannot become affected to my old addictions. I have to become where I am with where you are. And right now I know you're closer than what I think. But I got to cry out and make my eyes come open and ask you to give me my sight back I'm going to close with this there are many of you right now you feel like you're trapped but I prophetically declare that you're not trapped in bondage you're trapped 
in a blinded testimony. You don't see what God is doing. You might not know what God is doing. But one thing I want you to know is he's right there. The three steps to having victory when you've been blindsided. The first step is to remember this, that God has not gone anywhere. He's there. The second step is you got to believe to see. David said, I would have fainted unless I believed to see. Sometimes you got to have your faith have a conversation with your circumstances. Your circumstances say you're not going to make it. But your faith says, with God, I can your, your circumstances say you're sick, but your faith says you're healed. Your circumstances say you don't have enough money, but my faith says he's Jehovah Jireh. There are some people just don't know what to do. I'm praying today that God will help your unbelief. And the third thing is cry out to God like you know you're going to get an answer. Right now, as I get ready to end this message, God's not going to end his move. This is a perfect time. And one of the things I want to share with you personally that I do, very transparent with God. Everybody can't handle your transparency. Everybody can't handle who you are. Everybody cannot handle what God is doing in your life. But one thing I know there's a place with God to where you can be totally transparent with him. And you can tell him exactly what you want. You can tell him exactly what you need. You can take that moment to cry. You can take that moment to worship. But I want you to take this moment to say, I'm coming back from this. I might have been affected, but I'm not going to be infected. There's too much life ahead for you. There's too many good things that God has promised. This is a season that will pass this is a time by which your faith is being tested the effects of life cannot infect your walk with god you got to still trust him believe him count on him and understand this i can't miss another move if the blind man would have listened to the people he would have missed God. What are you saying? Your independency of having your own one-on-one -on -one relationship with God can get you your personal breakthrough. You just trapped in a testimony. But when you cry out to God, declare his word, believe him and trust him, you might be affected, but you're not going to be infected. I'm getting ready to pray with you. I'm getting ready to pray for you again. And I'm going to let you know one thing, and that is this. When it seems like it's too much to handle, when it seems like there's too much to deal with, when it seems like you're overwhelmed, don't know which way to go, the Bible says this, in all that ways acknowledge him, he will direct that path. He's a great shepherd. He's an awesome God, and he cares about you. There are some people right now up under the sound of my voice that maybe you don't know Jesus as your personal savior. Maybe you've strayed from God. Maybe you've fallen back from God. Maybe you don't even believe in God anymore or any longer. Maybe you've never believed in God. But I believe God has me right now talking to you. Maybe your faith is being tested. Maybe your spirit is being tried. Maybe that deep place in your life is at its lowest point. But this one thing I know, that God is in control. Here's how I live my life. I might not con control the circumstances, but this I know, God is for me. Some of you right now need to just say where you are. God, Jesus, I accept you as my Savior. I, I come to you and I say to you right now, come into my heart and come into my life. Sorry for my sins. Forgive me and wash me. I'm ready to live for you. I don't know everything about you, but I'm willing to come to you because I've been affected. 
but I don't want to be infected by not accepting you as my Lord and my Savior. Some of you right now, you're weak, you're frail, and just tired and even afraid. But I want to let you know right now, God is in that room. I want you to know that he's given his angels, according to Psalm 91, charge over you to keep you in all your ways and no evil shall befall you. And I speak and I prophetically declare that there's more ahead of you than there is behind you. And that what the enemy meant for evil, God is going to turn it for your good. I never saw this day like this. God did speak to me and I used to say to our church from the beginning of the year, one morning we're going to wake up and the entire world is going to be different. I said it, I recorded it, but I didn't see all of this. Sometimes the obscurity of God will manifest his promises and you're never in position to get a supernatural miracle until you're in a situation or a deficit to where you need God's divine intervention. And right now, I decree and I declare that your faith, your praise, and even if you don't have as much as you need, get the right connection that can stand with you and believe God with you because we all need one another. And that's why I'm sharing with you right now. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that even though we've been affected, we would not become infected. You're a great God and you do great things. I thank you for this opportunity to share with people around the country and even out of the country. I speak now, God, by your precious Holy Spirit that we might have been blindsided, don't know which way to go and don't even know exactly where you are, God. But right now we know you're there. We might not feel you. We might not be running around our houses, definitely not, not running around our churches. But right now, God, you're there. Right now you are there. And we thank you for being there for us. And at the end of the day, we know you love us. We know you got us. Cover our military troops, our first responders, cover our government, cover the people who are working in the hospitals and in the nursing homes and those who are helping people get tested and those who are volunteering their time all over the world, not only in the United States, but all over the world, those who are risking their own lives to try to help others. I pray you cover them and their families. We pray for those who have lost a loved one, those who are suffering from grief, those who are fearful, those who are homeless, those who are hungry, those who are broken. We ask you that this amazing God that we know will give us what we need. We're grateful unto you. We're thankful unto you that you are still in control. At the end of the day, you said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, we'll hear from heaven, you'll heal the land. God, right now, heal our land, heal our hearts, heal our spirits, and we thank you for victory. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope today you enjoyed this opportunity. Thank you for taking out the time to share with me, Pastor Jonathan McKnight. Sanctuary Praise Ministries, when eagles gather, we decree and we declare, we know you're an eagle. You're getting ready to soar. You might have some missing feathers. You might have some broken wings, but know this, that God is the repairer of the broken wings. I want to say this, prayersamust.org, www.prayersamust.org is an opportunity to join our intercessors around the country. It's not a church fellowship. It's just intercessors coming together. Visit that website and also sanctuarypraiseministries.com. Thank you for sharing with us this time. May God richly bless you, bless your family. Remember this, my prayer for you is that God will get the most out of you and you will get the most out of God. God bless you and have an amazing day and a blessed and prosperous week. Join us next week, same time, 10 a.m., when eagles gather, be blessed. Thank you for sharing and staying with us. Be blessed.